If you have a family and your family knows you're tech savvy, this exact same thing has probably happened to you. So basically what happened this week is that my brother-in-law texted me letting me know that his 2010 gaming PC would power on and the fans would spin, but he wouldn't get any signal to his monitor. So my first suggestion was the go-to information technology solution, which was, say it with me, turn it off and back on again. Even though nine times out of 10, this works in a hardware situation, this old gaming PC was responding much worse than I had originally planned. So I decided to swing by his house and pick up his ancient gaming machine. And here is where I start the troubleshooting process. Now before we begin, some tools you might need include a screwdriver, preferably magnetic, hands, and optional but highly recommended, some spare hardware such as a power supply, graphics card, and RAM, most of which were essential in debugging this system. Now the first and most simple of these steps is the process that I mentioned to my brother earlier. The turning off and on in electrical devices is called power cycling. In many cases across many devices, this action causes the internal hardware and memory to fully discharge, allowing it to reset. Hence the whole waiting 30 seconds thing that they always tell you when unplugging a device. The waiting period is actually sometimes necessary in order for the device to reset completely. But be careful not to overdo this process, especially with something like your PC, because excessive turning off and on could potentially corrupt storage or even harm your device. Granted, you'd have to probably try really hard in order to make this happen. Since power cycling didn't work, I moved on to one of the first things on my list when troubleshooting hardware. Specifically, since there was no image output and the graphics card looked a little rough, I decided to just pull it out of the system. With the standard Intel chips, server processors not included, this allows us to rely on the onboard graphics built into our CPU. For you AMD users out there, here's where the spare graphics card comes in hand. Unless of course you have the AMD APU line, which include onboard graphics as well. After removing the GPU, I tried powering on the system one more time, and still no luck. Another common issue that can keep a system from booting is when a RAM stick is not seated properly. This can actually cause all kinds of problems, like the famous blue screen of death. Since he had a dual channel kit of 8GB of RAM, I would have to determine if they were installed incorrectly or if one of the sticks had gone bad. I tried removing one stick and then swapping it with the other, then switching slots or even trying a completely separate stick of RAM. Once none of these worked, I realized it was even possible that one of the DIMM slots could be bad, meaning the motherboard was dead. But since I had not yet tried everything available, I moved on to the next step. When I got to this point of my quest for a fix, I realized it would be worthwhile to go ahead and just remove the hardware and rebuild the system on a cardboard box. Since I was having issues with the case's power button being intermittent anyway, this would mean I would have to jumpstart the PC by inserting a metal object, uh, for me the screwdriver, to bridge the power button pins near the rest of the front panel inputs on the motherboard. A quick guide on deep cleaning your system is as follows. As a note, this might not only increase performance, but may even possibly fix this issue you're having with your system. Especially older ones where the thermal compounds on your various components has dried up and begun to crack off. To clean your CPU, start by removing the heatsink. Many coolers are installed with a bracket screw combo, but my brother's computer used the standard Intel cooler. These are removed by rotating the four tabs, pulling up to release the tension, and then the cooler can simply be wiggled out of position. Here's an example of old cracking thermal paste. Now get a lint-free cloth or even a coffee filter and some rubbing alcohol between 70% and 90% and wipe the grease away. This part is super satisfying. Now the GPU is a little more tricky. Not this one. Now you're going to want to find a video or manual online detailing how to take your specific shroud off of your GPU for optimal results and to avoid possibly harming your hardware. As you can see on this GTX 460, I just unscrewed the four main screws, as well as two additional mounting screws, and lifted it up on the shroud. GPUs use a lot more thermal paste, so this cleanup might take some more time. I was not expecting this GPU to be so gooped up. At this point, I finished up my entire clean by spraying the whole system with compressed air to remove any dust. Dust can kill thermals and potentially even harm hardware, so be sure to do this every once in a while to keep your system running with maximum efficiency. Finally, when reapplying your thermal compound, again, remember GPUs take more, so be a little generous. As for the CPU, just make sure there's enough to cover most, if not all, of the heat spreader. 
When reapplying the heat sinks, make sure to tighten the hardware gradually using a corner to quarter pattern. This applies to both GPUs and CPUs and cars too. You know, when you're putting on the wheels. And if they still work after you're done, that will be a huge relief. After I wrapped all that up, I reassembled the system minus the GPU. I noticed that there was a bent capacitor on the motherboard. It was looking even more sure that the motherboard was the issue. However, powering all the components with my spare power supply and starting the caseless PC with the jumping trick I mentioned earlier, I heard a beep. And then I saw the BIOS post screen. That was it. We did it. I plugged the GPU again once more just to make sure that the whole system would work together. And again, the computer posted. So it turns out after all that the culprit was his cheap, no-name power supply. Hopefully you learned something in this video since these really are the general steps I take whenever I'm troubleshooting a gaming PC. And if anything, just don't buy a cheap power supply. Thanks again for watching this video. I really hope you learned something new. And if you did, please be sure to leave a like. Also leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know if you did learn anything or if you had any crazy stories or solutions when troubleshooting a gaming PC. I really thought at one point that this PC was toast. Follow me on Twitter for some more personal communication and advanced updates on videos and ideas, and subscribe to this channel for more tech content. I'm Lee from CompTV. Whoa, wait. Again? That's a lot of ram sticks. Really? Wait, what could this mean?